I think I would wholeheartedly agree with you if they, if they had to let Andover out. That Andover was sort of let out without a, a big fight because they didn't, there was no economic disadvantage to letting them out. So it's, it was solely, I think, um, because of the economic status of, of Newley that they're holding tight to this. So it doesn't seem quite fair if you let one out because there's no disadvantage to letting them out and then holding another one in. It does, the same policy on the whole, I think. So, and so Yeah, and I, you know, my job is to try to be consistent in That's the way I view. That's what I'm trying to do as well. in the way I view these types of situations. And for me, these these two entities were created by special law. And I definitely have an approach with Sky Island that I believe still holds with the I just want to say at the beginning of this, I don't like any part of this. I don't yeah, like any that. part of any of this. I think this is um, local feuding. Um, I don't know why we're dragged into this. I think that the locals should settle this. Um, I'm. You know, the argument was used last when, last time we discussed this that, you know, they didn't want an arbitrator because uh, the person was from outside and didn't know the culture of the place. Well, that's us. We're from outside and don't know the culture of the place. I'm really unhappy at making a decision. I'm going to make a decision because I don't seem to have a choice in this, but I don't like any bit of this. I just want to say that before we jump in. Representative Turner and, uh, and Representative Fuller, Representative McCray. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have two points. That what tease you line is lit up? <laughs> <laughs> if, if I may. First, um, on the private and special laws. I believe that Fry Island has two private and special laws. They have one private and special law that says they can't withdraw. Is that is that a private and special law? At least that's what I've been told. And then the other special law is um, SAD 6 and SAD 44 due to the cost sharing formula that they have a private, that one I've seen written as a private and special law. I'm not sure though about the, um, the law that says Fry Island cannot withdraw if that's just a regular statute or a private and special law. Well, it's the second page in the document that I provided to you. Um, which is, um, it is a private and special law. It's, uh, it was back in 2001, Chapter 8, LD 500. And if you look at um, Section 1, um, which is private, it, it amends private and special law in 1997, Chapter 41, Part A, and Section 8. And again, you see it kind of strikes um, the language there. Uh, that, it, that initial private and special law, or previous prior private and special law, when uh, when the, when the uh, town of Fry Island was withdrawn from the town of Standish, and uh, it, it required that they remain as part of uh, SAD 6 for its successor and pays its, its proportional share of cost. And then the lang that language was unless or until such time that it withdraws from the school administrative district in accordance with the applicable state law or public law. But that had, that had been struck in this private special law. So I just wanted to point out that it no. was two. Um, the, my other comment is, you're absolutely correct, Representative Cornfield. Um, you know, we should not be involved in local issues. And I wholeheartedly agree with you. And that's why um, the reason these bills are coming, at least in my view, a lot of it is because of the poorly written withdrawal law. There is no teeth in that withdrawal law, it says to towns that yes, you may withdraw, okay, and they start the whole process, they get a committee together, and then they, they say to the school board, such as my town, okay, in Burlington, we withdrew, we went to RSU 31, we said, here's our education plan, okay, now, you know, get back to us. 
Well, 180 days went by, and they didn't get back to us. And then they did get back to us. And then they said, yeah, okay, we're going to agree. And then we don't agree. There's nothing in the law that says they have to bargain in good faith. There's nothing in the law that says it has to come to a resolution. So this can go on for years and years and years. Hence why I feel that the department um, brought forward 1336 to put some teeth into it to the school board to say, after 180 days, you may, to the town that's asking to withdraw, you may petition the commissioner to withdraw, okay, to order uh, the binding, not withdraw, but to order binding mediation. And so that way there, the commissioner can then say, these two parties have got to get together and make that to talk. So that's why 1336, along with a lot of other important issues to the department about feeding our children, because nowhere in the current law and withdrawing does it talk about having to provide nutrition for the children. So that needs to be in there. Also, the cost sharing. Um, you don't have to present those to the town that is withdrawing. It's very important that towns understand uh, the, the cost that it is going to cost. And in most towns, uh, such as mine, we probably won't end up saving any money. That's not why we went into it. We went into it for educational purposes. Uh, and then also due to planning, and the department can talk more about that, but they wanted any town that withdrew that they had to do it by November 30th, I think, of the year before that uh, they withdrew. So that the department can prepare for that when they're doing their all their forms and whatnot. So to me, when you talk about 1336, that's part of the solution to keeping it from here. Because it puts language in that clarifies that does not allow school boards who have gone through this process, mine went through it three times, they're getting very well schooled at it, so they understand that they can run the clock out. A town has spends thousands of dollars on lawyers and they can just say, let's wait them out and see whether or not they can continue to stay in this fight or they give up. And that's why they end up here. Who's the board? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I certainly agree with the observations of Representative Cornfield and Representative Turner. That this is a difficult situation. We don't have clear answers. And I, I thought about it in two different kinds of ways. First of all, it's a jurisdictional issue. It's a no-win versus a no-win. If the decision is made to allow the separation to occur, one side is going to dislike us. If the decision is made for the separation not to occur, the other side is going to not like us. It's not important to be liked, but it's also important to know that at least we're making a significant impact or having some impact on those towns and their relationship. And it is that relationship between the towns which is severely at fault. So having failed in the jurisdictional analysis, I then went to a values analysis. Is it more important, do we value more highly the ability for a town to vote itself out of a relationship they entered into willingly, or do we find it more valuable to educate the children as the towns originally agreed? And so that too is a no-win situation, because it feels to me as if the real people who may be losing are the students, and hence that's why we're sitting around this semicircle. So I, I don't have an answer. But this concerns me greatly because it's the second time we've seen this, or it will be the second time that we've seen this. If 1336 gives us a language to work with, I wonder what happens if we explore that further. This is not, this is not comfortable with good. I appreciate the, your uh, sentiment, Representative Fuller, and the, those of us that have been on here multiple terms. It's, it's probably close to the 20th or 25th time. Um, really? We've had uh, bills like this come through. So, uh, Rosanna McCray. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm not comfortable with where we are either. Okay. But I'm not comfortable with where they are. 
in all these communities. They can't sell it to you. There is no vehicle that makes it get settled. And, and that's the beginning of how, to, of my statement of how I believe about it. I think this is clearly a hostage situation. I don't like hostage situations ever, ever. I liken this to a, a marriage which started out with it until death to us part. And, and those dissolve. And this, <coughs> this isn't as serious as a marriage. And, and this is going to go on forever unless somebody, probably this committee, does something to get people off the dime, to get people moving, to make it happen. So uh, I, I, I understand that there are reasons why certain parts of this, this SAD 44 would very much prefer that Newry stay in. Very easy to figure that. It's absolutely a financial thing. But they're being held hostage to <coughs> Okay? And I think that some vehicle needs to be developed. Binding arbitration, to me, seems to be the way to go. Not so much the binding mediation, uh, because I fear that the binding mediation would eventually end up having the entire district vote on exactly how they wanted this to go, which I think would still be a hostage situation simply because of the of the, uh, the numbers. But I, I really believe that something has to be developed that will get this stalemate. Stop being stalemate. I mean, just, just move it forward and get the problem resolved rather than holding one community hostage to the other two. And three. So that's my strong opinion. Thank you, Resident McRae. Resident Turner. Thank you. Uh, I just want to comment um, at the end of the withdrawal process, the third and final vote that the town asked him to withdraw is the only town. This is current law, and 1336 doesn't change it, nor does LB51 change it. Um, that it's still the, the town that seeks to withdraw, and they have to get two-thirds vote of those voting that day uh, on it in order to uh, Withdraw. I think we made some changes to that law on the 125th for, for withdrawal. I'm not sure. Um, I think we got some folks waving their hands back in the real office. If that's the case, then my concern that way is that's the way I ought, that's the way I'd like to see it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Doesn't Representative Hand have an amendment? <coughs> um, Yes, yeah, someone yeah. passed out to you with a uh, gold piece of paper. Um, while we're before we engage in that. Um, My goal really is to try to have a discussion, um, move off of, uh, maybe for a bit, off of who the towns are, where they are, who the people are involved, and, and talk about good public policy. And um, when we, when I came in the 125th, it was uh, on the tail end of a lot of, of the consolidation war, so to speak, and towns were looking to withdraw. And we, um, we crafted some, I think, some, some language that we took from municipal law and also took from uh, other, I uh, think, SAD withdrawal law that we created a, a, a pretty good structure for withdrawing. Um, so, what, what I think maybe if we talked about what we thought was um, good public policy around um, good faith negotiating, what that might look like, um, what people should do in that situation, um, and not, and sometimes I think it gets a little clouded when we talk about the five and special laws that were created, why they were created at the time, do those um, circumstances still, still exist? Is a law that was voted in the 1960s is that binding in perpetuity? You know, we don't find the future legislation. You know, just, you know, public policy-wise, what would we like to see across the, 
across the playing field. Um, so um, that might be a, a way to kind of move along a little bit without getting tied into, say, the emotion of the, of the, of the community that are kind of at, at all the time. So, um, so I don't know what the folks have thought about what the components of that might be. Um, certainly it sounded like you know, Representative Fuller was walking down that road for a bit. You know, uh, um, what are the kinds of things that are important? You know, what do we value in a, in a, in a public policy process? What would be those? those pieces that we would want to make sure. So one of those might be, you know, if people enter into agreements um, with a certain uh, understanding at one point in time, if, those, if things change in that understanding, you know, do they have a way um, to get out? So, you know, um, for example. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's an interesting proposition to make. If you enter into an agreement, at some point, at the point of entrance, don't you also create an exit agreement? And, and, and I'm not sure that exit agreement was here, given the fact it was this private and special law. And, and, and maybe the real take of this, just what people have been saying, is private and special laws have to be framed in such a way that an exit is also part of the process. In one of those laws, it says, um, uh, you know, um, says uh, that unless such withdrawal is first authorized by further amendment to this chapter, which is a private special law. So it says it's binding until we change it uh, in another you know, private special law. So um, mm -hmm. that, that piece is troublesome to me because it puts it right back to where we are today. We, we are sort of made the arbitrators of this, um, and I would like to come out of that. I wish, uh, uh, Representative Stewart, we could channel your uh, inner judge. But you know, I know you live with one back home. Feel that that's the. I don't want to touch this one. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, that's where I think we find ourselves. It's in, if we were sitting, um, you know, we don't. Those of us sitting around here don't have a dog in this fight, so it's not a personal thing at all. So you know, what do we what do we do here for good public policies, really, um, and what and what's fair? Um, so. But, uh, um, <clears throat> personally, I think there should be a way for folks to get out. I think I'm, I agree a, a lot with Representative McCray that you know people are following the process and um, and they're being uh, delayed um, time and time and time again. That's not bargaining in good faith. And so, um, and the, the other part that is a little bit troublesome to me is that there's an assumption. Uh, a predetermined assumption that at the end it's going to be people are going to vote to withdraw. And, and, and with evidence on both sides, that may not be the case. So uh, I don't think it's, it's fair to presume that that anything that if we were to try to pass something is it, it's slightly in favor of those wishing to withdraw. Uh, we still have to have a vote of the will of the people of those communities are in the withdrawal community. So, um, but anyway, so anybody else want to? Uh, we're going to get